working at Penn State. She's a horticulture extension educator based in Northeast Pennsylvania, focusing on greenhouse floriculture, hydroponics, green industry, and industrial hemp. She joined Penn State Extension in March of 2019. Before joining Penn State Extension, Crystal worked in the industry for J.R. Peters as a technical specialist. She was also an adjunct professor at Delaware Valley University teaching greenhouse management and introduction to hydroponics. Crystal has worked with the Penn State Flower Trials and is, has held a seat on the Floriculture Advisory Board for trials since 2012. At the trials, she consults on all matters of plant nutrition, helped implement a nutritional monitoring program, and co produces and co-stars in the Flower Trial video series with Trials Director Sinclair Adam. Crystal has a Bachelor of Science in Horticulture from Delaware Valley University and is an Environmental and Agricultural Plant Sciences Master student at Penn State University. So she's almost there, Crystal. Almost, right? almost there. I'm almost done. She lives in East... Easton, Pennsylvania with her husband and two daughters. Take it away. All right. Well, thank you. I'm super excited to be here with you all today and, uh, you know, kind of showcase what we do at the Penn State Flower Trials. Um, so a little bit of overview. Um, I'm going to talk about the history of our trials. Our trials are very rich in history. So I have a lot of background about that and it's very exciting. Um, I'm going to talk about how we evaluate plants during the growing season. Um, we actually do container plantings and in-ground plantings. Um, I'm going to touch on how all of these trials provide information for commercial growers and for gardeners. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about our annual field day that we host uh, every year and um, a lot of things like that. So Penn State has been uh, trialing flowers since 1936. So we're getting really close to our 90th anniversary and we're really, really excited. Um, so this picture uh, just shows an older picture of our flower trials when we were located at State College. Um, we were at State College from 1936 to 1994, I believe, maybe 92. Um, and then we moved from State College to uh, the Landisville uh, Research Center. So I'll talk about that in a minute. So here's just some more pictures of, um, you know, old school Penn State uh, flower trials. These are in ground. Uh, I think these are actually like peony plants. Um, here's a picture of where our trials used to be located. If you've ever been to Penn State, um, if you, this is um, East Halls where all the freshmen live. And over here in this corner, is where the Bryce Jordan Center and the law building is. So what happened was um, in the 90s, they were like, hey, we're going to build this law building right where our flower trials were. <laughs> and they were like, it's time for you guys to go. So uh, we picked up sticks and we moved to uh, Lancaster County, which is a uh, zone 6B um, growing zone. Um, it's actually one of the hubs of agriculture in the state of Pennsylvania. We have lots and lots of growers there of all types of commodity crops. Um, and we're in really close proximity to the mid-Atlantic states and Philadelphia and New Jersey. So it kind of made sense for us to, to move out there. So here's a few more kind of newer-ish pictures of before we moved um, out to Landisville. You can see these are in-ground plantings here um, at Penn State. Um, we, um, at our Landisville trials, we actually don't do in-ground trials um, except for perennial crops. And I'll talk all about that. Um, so you can see here, this is another picture. These are, this is East Halls. And if you turn down this road, you can go to the creamery with our world famous ice cream and things like that. So just a couple of more pictures I'll show you. We do uh, do shade plantings and things like that. Um, some fabulous Celosia from, I think this is like 1994 and, and things like that. So just a couple more pictures so you can kind of see. And then in 1994, we moved to what we all refer to as CREC. Um, I know that sounds like some kind of um, nautical term, but it really stands for Southeast Agricultural Research and Extension Center. And uh, that facility, um, we've been there for many, many years. It was originally actually a tobacco uh, facility that we would test uh, growing tobacco crops and things like that. Lancaster County has um, been known to grow a lot of tobacco um, 
up until uh, we still grow some, not too much though. Um, so we test grew uh, tobacco there. We do corn, uh, soybeans. We do some tomatoes. We do a little bit of industrial hemp. Um, we will do, um, I had a strawberry trial there and things like that. We don't do tree fruit though. Um, we have a tree fruit center um, in located a couple counties away in Adams County, Pennsylvania. And then this is more what our trials look like. Um, now you can see we have all of these um, plantings in pots and I'll kind of go over how we do this. We have a shade house, which is actually just a hoop house structure with a shade covering on it. And then um, this is at one of our flower trial field days, which I'll go over kind of those events that we host. All right, so we also have two satellite sites, which is really exciting. Um, and really what that means is that not only do we get to see how things perform at a different location, we also get to kind of showcase all of these great flowers that come out um, into the marketplace. So uh, Hershey Gardens, home of Hershey Park, um, they do a flower trial for us. They do in ground. So you can see, and what they do is they generally will think about what plants they're getting, and then they try to incorporate them into these flower trials um, right here. This is usually um, visited by about 100,000 people a year. Um, these plants are also rated. Um, I'll talk about our rating system, but each trial has a has a rating of, and we rate plants on how they do. Um, so the Hershey Gardens um, trial are rated there. Um, these are in ground. And the interesting thing is these plants change every year. So the designers over at Hershey Gardens, um, it, they struggle a little bit sometimes, I think, because they don't really know what they're getting until we know what we're getting. And, and sometimes we don't know what we're getting until April. Um, and then this is just another kind of close-up picture. Um, Hershey Gardens is a beautiful facility. Um, if you can ever go there, they're botanical gardens. And then we have another trial at North Park in Pittsburgh area. And uh, North Park is amazing park system. And we have an army of master gardeners who help us do the trials every year. And actually the North Park trials are completely run by master gardeners um, in Allegheny County. And you can see there too, it is also an in-ground trial as well. And so, and this is just a big map of North Park. And if you kind of see here, kind of where my mouse is, this is right around where um, the flower trials are. So if you ever go to uh, North Park. So I wanna show you a little bit about our website and how our flower trial website works. Um, I think this is, a, this is a really great tool for anybody to use, uh, flower breeders, um, growers, gardeners, and things like that. Um, you can see how plants do in our location at Lancaster County. Um, we don't publish our uh, satellite reports, um, but we do give those out to the breeders. And really what this does is it ha can help you figure out if you think you might want to incorporate those plants into a garden plan or bring it into a garden center or things like that. Um, this QR code, if you hold your smartphone up to the screen, you can, um, oh, sorry about that. Um, you can go right to our flower trial website and you'll see exactly what I have on the screen here. And I can make sure that you all uh, get where this, uh, get the link for this as well. So how this uh, flower trial website works is it's really nice. You go to, um, if you just Google Penn State flower trials, you can see our results page. And I'm going to play a short video and I'm going to kind of walk you through how these flower trials work, this flower trial website works. Um, so let me play it for you. So first you pick a year and then you pick your container type container or basket. You can go down and you say you want to just look at what begonias were graded, uh, rated greater than four for the year of 2022. And it will bring up every begonia that is rated greater than four, four, uh, five being the best um, for last year's trials of 2022. And then you can go and you can look and see how each of these have performed. Um, so you can see our ratings, you can see how they performed in sun and shade. So this particular begonia was entered in um, by the breeder in a sun planting and a shade planting. 
So what that means is they send us those plants and they're like, hey, we want to see how these do in the shade. So we put them under a 50% shade cloth, and then we also trial them in the sun. And you can see how well they rated um, and what our ratings are. So Sinclair Adam, our trial director, um, a very good friend and colleague of mine, he goes out and he rates plants four times a year. Um, the first one usually right after 4th of July. Um, and then at the end of July, then mid-August, and then the end of August. And we rate on uniformity. We rate on uh, flowering or flower power, as we like to say, on foliage and how good that looks, on overall growth, and then what the overall average of the rating is. And one is unacceptable. And that means that we probably killed that plant. And I will tell you, we kill plants. It happens. Um, Two is below average. Um, three is fair, just a, an average looking plant. Um, four is good, a uh, very nice display. And then five is excellent. And um, that helps people decide, um, you know, if they want to bring that plant in. It helps breeders decide if they want to market that plant in our area. And, you know, you have to think that these plants are bred all over the world, right? Um, some are bred in uh, Europe, some are bred in China. Some are bred in South America and they're grown there. Um, some are bred in California. And then they all come to the United States to be grown. And you are think you have to think like, how crazy is the weather patterns in just different parts of the US, right? It's super dry in Colorado. It's gorgeous in Southern California. It's hot and humid in the summertime in Pennsylvania. And all of these plants are gonna perform differently in each of those locations. So we can see how these plants do in those different locations. And, you know, the interesting thing about flower trials is that we have one at Penn State, Cornell has one, um, Texas, University of Georgia, Colorado State, uh, most of the land grants will have some type of flower trials that you can go and look at. And sometimes botanical gardens will also have um, flower trials as well. Oh, there we go. So I want to talk about a little bit about how we keep things clean at the flower trials and why this is really important for us. Um, so each breeder has their own bench. So I'm sure you all have seen plants maybe from Ball or Duman or Proven Winners. When those plants come in from that breeder, they get their own bench in the greenhouse. Um, we don't mix breeders. And the reason for that is we don't want, um, if any plants come in with any insects or diseases, we don't want that to spread to other breeders. Cause the last thing we wanna do is call breeder A and say, hey, all of your geraniums have Xanthomonas because they got them from breeder B. So we don't want that to happen. So we keep everything nice and clean. Um, and the other thing that we do is because geraniums and begonias are notorious for having disease issues, um, we actually put them in the middle of the benches. So they go in the middle of the bench and then they're surrounded on the outside by lots of other plants. Um, so maybe they're surrounded by coleus. And if you look really closely at this picture, you can see that these flats here are going um, kind of left to right. And then these ones are going up and down. And then these two go up and down. And then this flat goes left and right as well. So these plants on the outside kind of act like a buffer zone for the more susceptible plants from each breeder. Um, we use new pots. We sanitize pots if we end up reusing some of our five gallon pots. Um, and then the planting benches, when we're planting on planting day, uh, we, actually, um, we actually sanitize each table in between those breeders. Um, and then for geraniums and begonias and things like that, we will uh, we actually use spacer plants out in the trials themselves. So you'll never see three different breeders, geraniums next, right next to each other. They're going to have a spacer grouping in between them. Um, and, you know, the reason we do this is because healthy plants reduce plant stress. Um, and we want to grow good plants for these breeders. We want them to be able to see how these are going to produce and how they're going to do really well here in Pennsylvania. So we want to try to reduce um, diseases, incidences of diseases and insects. Um, we actually do have two different uh, soilless medias that we have made for us by a media company um, based in Pennsylvania. And one is for 
uh, geraniums and other plants who have like a little bit higher pH. And then we have another one that has a little bit less of a lime charge. So we can, for plants like petunias and things like that. Um, and we do have a pretty strict mon a nutrient monitoring protocol. And what that is, is we have interns, uh, college student interns every year, and their job is to go out and pick different plants. And they pick the same plants every week. Um, we have different uh, criteria of which, um, which varieties we're going to check. And we do what's called a pour through method. And that's where we take those pots. We make sure they're sufficiently irrigated. And then we come back through with some uh, distil distilled water to push out the fertilizer salts in the pot. And then we test that water to see what the pH is or what the EC, which is the electrical conductivity of the um, soil. So we can see how much nutrient is in there. And then we make decisions based on that. Do we need to raise the pH? Do we need to lower the pH? Um, do we need to maybe change our fertilizer, a little bit more fertilizer, a little bit less fertilizer? Um, and speaking of fertilizer, we do have a two-stage approach for fertilizer. We use a slow release product um, in our pots. And then we also use a water-soluble fertilizer as well um, to make sure that we can, you know, sometimes it rains a lot in Lancaster County. And if it does, um, we might not get to put fertilizer on. So that slow release is a little bit of an insurance policy to make sure that we do that. Um, we also do use biological control agents. So we, you know, we will purchase in, uh, you know, beneficial insects or nematodes or things like that. We do have a dedicated spray program for our begonias, and then we do have a disease scouting program. So all of this just means that we do everything we can to make sure that our breeders are getting the best um, you know, the best trialing site uh, for their plants. So here's those ratings in scale um, kind of one more time. And really what that, you know, just shows you is how we rate what we do. Um, Sinclair takes care of all of this. I, I kind of go around with them sometimes and we, we talk about what we think they should be or um, things like that. But it's about 40 hours, I think, it takes him to do all the plants. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this. We had, last year, we had a thousand container entries. So a thousand plants um, were submitted for us to plant out, a, a thousand varieties from different breeders and then to uh, to rate and trial for the whole season. So we do annuals and we do do perennials as well. So our annual plants are grown all of, let me back up there for a second. All of our plants will come in as um, a plug plant, whether it's a 288 plug or maybe it's a 50 or a, a 128. It just depends on what that breeding company's uh, rooted liner company sends to us. Um, each one of those plugs gets planted in a four inch pot and we plant an entire tray of it. Um, so back on that slide where I had all those coleus in the bench, um, that's a, an 18 inch, I mean, an 18 pot tray. We plan out 18, uh, transplant plugs. And then what happens is each one of those four inch pots will go into a five gallon cheater, uh, or five gallon trade pot, um, to be put out into our trial. And we do three replications of that. So if a breeding company sends us, let's just talk about geraniums. I've been picking on geraniums a lot. I'm sorry. Um, so if um, breeding company A sends us a geranium to be trialed in a container, um, you'll when you walk our trials, you'll see three of that specific geranium in our trials. Um, so that means that we will have four plants in each one of those pots. So there's 12, technically 12 geranium plants out there in the trials. Um, and then what happens is with the extras, I know you're thinking, oh, goodness, what do you do with all those extras, Crystal? There's, you must have lots of, uh, over at the end of the season. What we do is some of those plants will go out to the trial sites. Um, we do plant extra for the trial sites as well. So if a breeding company sends us a lot of plugs, and we have that option, those will go out to the trials as well. We try to do as much representative um, from each breeding company as we can. Um, and then with the rest of them, what we do is either we use them in our own um, trial plantings of, um, you know, just different things around the farm for people to come and look at um, and see how they do in containers or in different garden settings or things like that. Or the lucky master gardeners who help us every year, they get to take them home at the end of the day. <laughs> 
And that's like always a big excitement. Everybody gets an empty tray and the extras are just put out on um, farm wagons and people get to go and fill up their trays and take them home. So it's always really exciting. So I talked a lot about that kind of flower trials and how we do things um, and why we do them. Um, but I know you probably all want to see like really cool plants, right? Um, so I will show you. Uh, the first plants I'm going to show you is our best in show. And um, best in show means that they scored a five on every single rating. And interestingly, all of our best in shows this year did not have any flowers. Um, we had a sedum coral reef. We had this ornamental um, uh, grass, love and rockets from intrinsic perennials. That's an in-ground plant actually. And then we had Junkus blue mohawk um, from proven winners. And actually let me back up because I forgot to tell you about perennials. So we trial perennials as well. Um, that is a new addition since Sinclair became our trials director, goodness, almost 10 years ago now. Um, and we, the way we do perennials is really cool, actually. Um, we get perennials in and we actually trial them for three years because we want to see how they deal with the summer and then the winter snows or maybe the winter lack of snows and things like that. So perennials are planted in the ground in the summertime for year one. They're grown that entire summer. They are overwintered in the ground. Um, then the next spring starts and they start to be rated again for year two. Then they overwinter for year, uh, that winter. Then they are rated for year three. And then we actually do rate them in the, kind of in the winter uh, in that last spring to see how they do with the third winter. And then they're pulled out after winter number three before summer of summer of year four and uh, we see how they do. Sometimes we don't do a really great job with perennials in Lancaster County because our winters are really bizarre lately, I guess is the best way to say it. Um, we have really, really cold temperatures sometimes and we get lots of snow or sometimes it's cold and then it's warm and it's cold and it's warm. Uh, it's 64 degrees and sunny here. And I actually told my husband, I wanted to take my paddle board out. And he's like, I'm pretty sure the river's like 45 degrees right now. Um, so we just never know how things are going to react. And this is a really good option for these breeding companies who breed perennials to say, this is a great perennial, but it's just not doing well in zone six. So maybe we need to have it as a zone seven hardy or something like that. Um, breeding companies will send us the same plants multiple years too. They might send it to us under number, which means it doesn't have a name yet. It's not available on the market. Or, you know, they'll send us the same plant a couple years in a row just to see how it does. Um, in 2018, we had 30 extra inches of rain in the summertime. Um, it was just a monsoon all summer long. And there were some plants that did really, really well. And I remember saying to, I don't, can't remember who I was talking to. And I was like, goodness, if these plants look this good this year, I can't wait to see how good they're going to look next year. And then the next year we had a more normal uh, kind of rainfall season this year, uh, 2022, it was dry. It was so dry here in Pennsylvania. So it's a really good opportunity for breeding companies to see how things trial. It's also really great for garden centers because they can see how they think that things will sell for them later on in the season or in next year or what they want to bring in into their breeding programs. And the nice thing is too, we always say that if things look good at the Penn State flower trials, you should probably consider putting them into your program because I know it probably sounds like we baby plants a lot, but we don't we don't neglect them, but we don't also, we're not out there coddling them. I mean, they do get fertilized. They do get, um, you know, some different, uh, you know, disease stuff and things like that. But really we're not out there spoon feeding or babying plants to make sure they survive or not um, and, and things like that. So, all right. So I'm going to show you some of our top performers of our container plants this year. Um, I think I didn't pick all of them because it's really hard. Um, so I picked I picked my three favorites um, out of the best of a uh, best in show, which means they were rated, I think, a 4.5 or higher for the average of the season. Um, if you really want to see the whole list, um, I can make sure you guys get that and, and things like that. Um, when we rate, we don't ratings for the flower trials are not rated on my favorites or Sinclair's favorites or anything like that. But when I get to give talks like this, I get to tell you about my favorites. And that makes me happy because I 
like to show off all of these great plants that we that we get to get in and get to see and things like that. So let's talk about angelonias first. Um, we had um, we had ten angelonias entered this year, and so these are my favorite three. Um, I love this uh, angel dance from ball floor plant, this fuchsia bicolor. It is just so pretty. It is a dark purple and it has like a kind of off white ish uh, bicolor to it. Um, the Archangel series from Ball Floor Plant was wonderful as well. And this Aria Alta Pink from Doom and Orange, this pink was so pretty. And it's it's kind of hard to see sometimes on the screen, like it's not the same color depthness, but it was just a really gorgeous, like pink-ish purple kind of color. Um, begonias, we had 83 begonias this year and we get all kinds of begonias. We get traditional flowering begonias. We get double begonias. We get, um, these ones, these, uh, Rex Jurassic series from ball floor plant. These are kind of a traditional, like more like house plant Rex begonia, but you can use them in landscapes in shady areas. So it's really cool to kind of see these foliage plants kind of come into their own and not be in a traditional setting, maybe in somebody's you know, living room window or something. Um, the top hat series and then the bionic bronze leaf. Um, I can't remember who did this one. I, I missed the breeder name, but this one from J Syngenta Flowers, um, both really great performers um, and did really, really well. And the interesting thing about um, our flower trials is like I said, we don't ever know what we're going to get. So some years we might get 83 begonias and next year we might get 10. I, I, you know, it just depends on what the breeders want to send to us and what they think they want to see, how they trial in, um, in our area. Um, Bidens, we had two really great Bidens from out of six from Selecta One, uh, this um, NAMID com com bleh, Compact Yellow and this Red and Yellow Eye. I really liked this one a lot. It was really pretty um, and it did really well for us in our trials. Um, caladiums, I I really like caladiums, and we are getting um, every year. We have a handful. We have five this year. We actually had one that was trialed in sun, um, and I should have added that in. Um, but these were all trialed in fifty percent shade. Uh, classic moon or classic caladium sent us uh, crystal moon, and then the ballet slippers, which that pink and green is just beautiful. And then the proven winners, heart to heart snow flurry. So um, you know. The interesting thing is sometimes you'll go to a garden center and you'll say, you know, I, I saw this at the Penn State Flower Trials and I would like to get classic Caladium's Crystal Moon. And your garden center might not have that. Um, it just depends on how good of a job, you know, they do going out and finding things. But, you know, with Proven Winners it has a lot of marketing and they do a lot of commercials and things like that. So people know Proven Winner plants by name. So it's kind of interesting. You'll, I'll, I'll go to garden centers and I'll hear people say, well, I saw this Proven Winners one on, on TV and I, I'm interested in it. Um, but, you know, it's, it's rare that I hear somebody say they want this plant from Ball or something like that, just as an example. Um, this Calabracoas, we had 56 Calabracoas this year. Um, and you know, it's, it's crazy to see how many different caliber goas there are. Um, this one from ball floor plant, um, bumblebee blue was a really pretty purplish blue with a yellow center. Um, conga yellow from ball floor plant was great. And I really, I really did love this one from proven winners. It's yellow and pink on the same flower. So pretty, just a really great mounding habit. Um, that's something that uh, we look for in um, uniformity of seeing like how well does the plant mound. And you can see in this in this variety, like it is a really great mounding habit. Oh, sorry about that. It went backwards. Um, Solosias, we had 18 Solosias this year and it is the year of the Solosia. So it was great to be able to see all these. And it was so wonderful to like just walk down the line and just see at Solosia after Solosia and all different kinds. Um, the Flamma Golden Seed from Cicada was wonderful. Um, the Kilo series from uh, Beacon Camp performed so well for us at Penn State. We've had it multiple years. And the nice thing about these are they are great late season performers too. So if you're thinking about like what you want to put in your gardens or your containers for fall, you know, thinking about like, hey, you know, I got these mums, but I want something else. You should look for Solosias, um, especially if you're in, you know, probably 
we're zone six B, I think at Lanc Lancaster, I'm six A, um, even up into zone five, these would do really great, um, you know, in those uh, fall container plantings. So coleus, coleus is coming into its own out uh, 21 this year, 21 coleus. And um, we do pinch these back a lot over the summer. Um, we will have um, our master gardener volunteers or sometimes our interns will come through and, and they'll trim them back some to keep them a little bit um, more shapely. Um, but this one, Dragonheart from Ball Floor Plant, it is just the, the prettiest lime green and pink colors. And I think it would look so great in a container planting uh, with different things. And the kind of cool thing about how we do our trials is it's actually interesting to see just a big giant pot of something, coleus or petunias or celosias, because you get to see that giant mass of color and you're like, oh man, maybe we should start to think about doing that and just having one big container of something, maybe a begonia or a New Guinea impatient. Um, uh, this peach frizzle from ball floor plant. I love this because it has all these really great wavy, wiggly, curly leaves. And then pineapple looks fresh from doom and orange. All right. Um, and then combos. So we do combos really interestingly at um, Penn State Flower Trials. We do containers and baskets in the same plants. So you'll see um, we plant them in these, um, you know, traditional terracotta pots. These are the only ones that we don't plant in our five gallon pots. And then we will also do a hanging basket. And what we, the reason we do that is we want to see how plants perform in the basket versus a container plant on the ground because you know the basket is a different environment it has air movement all around it gets a little bit more beat up by the wind maybe um you know the basket temperature is probably a lot hotter and things like that so you can see this one is in the back this is on the um on the ground but this one is in the basket um can uh fetty rainbow bridge from doom and orange this one is really great because it has all these different colors all in one combo um Mix Masters conga line, and then uh, this Trixie on the double 23 is just such a pretty purple uh, double uh, caliber color. All right. All right, let's talk about dahlias. Dahlias are, um, they're a great pot plant, um, great in containers and things like that. So these are not cutting type dahlias, um, but they are, you know, really good statement plant we do struggle with dahlias in, in the late summer um, in, at our research farm just because it is so hot. Um, but usually by end of August, um, they really turn around and they do really, really well for us for the you know at rest of August and into September and even sometimes into October when we're starting to pitch plants out. Um, but this Labella Magori, this has done really well for us uh, the last couple of years. Uh, Venti from Selecta One, Mango from Selecta One, and then this uh, gigantic uh, Fun Pink also from Beacon Camp. I really like this one because I think it almost looks like the petals are painted. So let's talk about geraniums. I Like I said, I picked on geraniums a lot, but um, we had five geraniums entered this year. And last year, I think we had 25 geraniums entered and some years we have 50 geraniums entered. And I think some of that is due to market trends. Okay. So I'm going to own it. I'm millennial and, um, I don't really like to deadhead plants. <laughs> so I, um, I don't often buy geraniums because I don't like to deadhead them. I did teach my younger daughter how to do this when she was about three. So she's pretty good at doing it for me. If I happen to bring some home. But I, I know this trend of my millennial friends saying, well, what can I plant that I don't have to deadhead? Or what can I plant that's going to bloom all summer long or, or things like that? So, you know, we got a lot of stuff going on in our life and we don't have time to, to take care of our plants as good as we should. So we want something a little bit more low maintenance and geraniums, they aren't it. Um, but these two um, from Cerny Seed, which was actually a Czech Republic company, um, these are really great uh, to these. This violet is just a really pretty uh, pinkish red color. So talk about uh, sun. We had a bunch of different kinds of impatience. These impatience hybrid are sun patients. So they are uh, kind of like the New Guinea type, but they're uh, for sun. Um, these are all really great varieties here from Syngenta, Cicada, and Pan American Seed. Uh, these New Guinea type impatience, these were all grown in our shade house. And I love, oh, sorry about that. 
my mouse is a little bit sensitive today. Um, I love this uh, wild romance one. It is, it's so pretty because before it blooms, it looks like a little rose. Uh, the Rococo has these ruffled petals. It's just really, really great. And uh, the Color Power series from Selecta One, this, is, this orange is almost sparkly. That's how orange it is. It, when the sun hits it, it's just stunning. And Impatience Wall Arena, we had 27 Impatience Wall Arenas uh, entered into our program this year. And now I'm sure all of you remember when Impatience Downy Mildew hit and everybody's impatience melted in August and everybody was like, what is going on? And then we didn't have Impatience for a little while and now they're back. And I really wanted to highlight these two uh, versions for you guys because both of these varieties, uh, Amaras from Syngenta and Beacons from Pan American Seed are downy mild impatience downy mildew resistant, which means that they were bred for resistance to impatience downy mildew. And we have had, and we still do get uh, traditional impatience in our trials that get impatience downy mildew right next to these guys that don't get it at all. So if you are looking to put impatience back into your garden beds or things like that, you know, you should ask your garden centers to get these in because they are just wonderful. And I do love good impatient. Petunias, we had 80, 89 petunias this year. Um, it was just petunia on petunia on petunia. Um, bees knees, one of my perennial favorites, this great yellow from ball floor plant. Color rush pink, um, also from ball floor plant, um, we have a joke about in page, uh, petunias in Lancaster County that the actual best-selling petunia is bubblegum pink, um, and it probably is. You can't drive by somebody's mailbox, garden bed, hanging basket, street pole planter without seeing petunia bubblegum vista pink, um, but it didn't rate as well in our trials, it, um, but a really good option was color rush pink. So just it kind of depends on the year. There's other years where it's gotten best in show. It just depends on the year. Um, and then itsy white is actually, it is a petunia, but it's a really tiny petunia. So it's more similar to a calabrocoa. Um, but calabrocoa tend to have a little bit more issues with uh, diseases, or not diseases, um, nutritional issues. And sometimes homeowners struggle with calabrocoa, whereas with this impatient, I mean, this petunia itsy, they might not have those issues as much. Um, are these uh, echabeshias, or these uh, sumbeckias, I'm sorry, from bull genetics, they were so, so fabulous. Um, all summer long, they just look so pretty. You can see, I think that these ones, these mayas, they were a about three foot tall in the container. So a really great statement plant, good color, um, you know, no, no insect issues, no Japanese beetle issues, really anything like that. So a uh, great option. Um, I don't know who's carrying these yet, um, but I'm really excited. I'm hoping they come back to the trials this year so I can see how well they do. We had a lot of salvias, we had about 13. Um, so we had some really good ones, a couple different kinds. I'm going to throw it out there for uh, Danzinger Flower Farm. I love Sally Fun. It is a grayish white one, and it's so cool. It looks really great in a container, so you should think about that one. Um, uh, we had a couple scavolas, about six of them, but all really good performers. Um, these ones from Suntory, uh, the Sun uh, Sir Diva ones were really good. And the fairies from Selecta One. Verbena, um, you know, Sometimes verbenas are a little bit tough. They don't really like it when it's super, super hot. They sometimes they'll stop blooming a little bit, but these were all really good. Uh, this compact neon pink, um, I really did love this coloration here of this uh, pink color. So that was a really great one as well. Uh, vincas, so we had 16 vinca. Um, vincas kind of stole the show for a little while when impatients were, you know, we couldn't plant impatients as much as we wanted to. So, you know, we've kind of moved back into that. But, um, I do really love this soiree one, this cheeky pink, because it's so, I I love ruffly flowers. I think they're really cute. <laughs> um, and I really did like this one a lot. Um, and then this, you know, mega bloom and the peach one from Sarney as well. That was a really pretty orange. And then we had some zinnias. Um, this is just a kind of a traditional one. And then this uh, Zydeco, this was actually, this won a pretty big award too. I think it might've been Zydeco white though, but um, both really good performers, great flower power all summer long, things like that. Um, 
So that's kind of the end of my uh, kind of brief tour into the flower trials. Um, I will say, if you want to see more about what we do at the flower trials, we do have on our flower trials website, um, Sherry had mentioned that we do do a, a video series every year. And um, it's myself and Sinclair Adam. And we, we just kind of wander around the trials different times of the year. And we're like, hey, what's looking great right now? Or, you know, this year we did just foliage. We just highlighted plants that were green or gray or white, uh, you know, whatever colors we got, um, things that didn't flower this year. Um, and my favorite one to do is um, the survivors. And what we do is we do that one right before we start to get rid of our plants for the end of the season where they go out to the compost pile. And it's really cool because we can see what looked really great all season long, or maybe what would look good in a fall planting situation and things like that. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, we do have an Instagram, so you can follow along at our Instagram, Penn State Flower Trials, and kind of see what we're up to. Our interns, you know, take videos for us and different things like that. So um, those are some of the options to see more of what we have and and kind of what we do. I also, I think there should be a video of um, what flower trial field day looks like. And that's a really cool event. Um, if you live in the mid-Atlantic states, um, you can come to flower trials. Um, we are open dawn to dusk, uh, June 1 until I think August 31st. Don't quote me on the, no, September 31st, I'm sorry. Um, seven days a week. And you can come and stroll the flower trials at your leisure. You can see all the different plants. Uh, they all have really great signage. Talks about, you know, the name, the breeder, where they're from, 